and welcome to Cookville First United Methodist Church and our virtual worship service for April the 11th. We are so happy that you have joined us. It is good to gather in this way, and we hope that when you're ready, you'll come and visit us here in our sanctuary once again. Um, in the past few weeks, we've been meeting in person in our gym and in our sanctuary, but we are now moving to our sanctuary only. We are going back uh, close to normal, so we'll be back here in the sanctuary at 8.30, and at 11 o'clock, and we are also beginning our Sunday school classes and our small groups throughout the week. And so if you'd like more information about what's available, uh, we would encourage you to call our church office and we'll be happy to help however we can. Um, it was great to gather with you last week if you were able to be with us for Easter in the park. We had such a wonderful crowd um, and to be able to celebrate it in that fashion was just a blessing. And it was so good to see so many of you. We, again, understand you may not quite be able to be ready to gather back together again, but to share in the fellowship and the goodness of that day was just a blessing to me. And I hope that it was for you as well. Um, that's all for our announcements today. Um, and again, it's so good to gather with you like this on our YouTube channel. And as we begin our worship time, could we pray together? So let's pray. Our gracious and loving God, we thank you for the opportunity to be together and with you, even in this fashion. We pray that through this time, your will for us might be known, and that we might live out your plans for us in the world around us, so that people might know of who you are and your love for them. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Thank you once again for being here, and may the peace of Christ be with you.
Behold, the resurrection claims us. We want to see with our eyes and touch with our hands the marks of God's sacrificial love. Behold, the Spirit calls us. We want to know the peace of those who believe where they have not seen. The ancestors sing to us, Christ is risen, God is light. Live this light. Blessed are those who live the resurrection. May we join their everlasting song, Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Affirmation today is from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 6, and Colossians 1, 15 through 20. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter and the twelve, and then to the many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body, the church and the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to Psalm 133 says, Behold how good and pleasant it is when we live together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life, forevermore.
like to remind you each week that we send out our prayer requests to our congregation and our church family uh, every Friday. And we want to let you know that if you will call us, if you have prayer requests, we'll be happy to, to add those to the list. So one, please do that. We encourage you. We want to know if you have prayer requests. And two, uh, as you receive those requests, we encourage you to pray for them throughout the week. So may we pause and pray and bring our concerns to God. Our gracious God, we gather today as we are able, grateful that we may live as Easter people. As your Son has risen, so have we. You have given us the grace to rise above the difficult aspects of our lives, our troubles, our temptations, our fears and our doubts, our everyday struggles. And God, may the reality of the resurrection be evident in our experience and in our outward living. We come before you with praise, knowing that this is available to us. We ask today, we come to you today, praying for those around us who are in need of resurrection hope. There are so many who deal with so much, and we ask for your presence in our lives and in theirs that your grace may be made known, that your presence may be made known through our willingness, our willingness to serve and to love and to heal. We thank you for the gift of your resurrected Son, our Savior, who has prepared for us a path of life. May we further know who he is to us, further open ourselves to him that he may do his work within us, that he may live in us. And it is in his holy name that we pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
It is always good to be aware of God's gifts to us, and it is always appropriate for us to pause and give our thanks to God. So may we do that now and pray a prayer of thanks. Pray with me, please. Our great God, in our giving, we acknowledge your goodness, and through our gifts, may your goodness be further known through the work of your church. We thank you for all that you have given and done for us. May our lives reflect who you are, and may the world know of your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the 20th chapter of John, verses 19 through 23. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed him his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Well, good morning, beloved. Welcome to worship on this Sunday after Easter. Today we're going to talk about changing our fear factor. You're probably familiar with the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which has one of the longest bridges and even tallest bridges in the world. It's actually five miles long. Some drivers are fearful of crossing it, as you might imagine. So luckily, the bridge authority there has a driver's assistance program. You can call 24-7 for help to cross the bridge, particularly if you are just totally paralyzed by fear of crossing it, which some people are. So, if you were to make a list of your fears, what would be on the list? I'm not a very fearful person, but I do have a few things that kind of give me the willies. Uh, Snakes, for one thing. I don't like snakes. I don't like really tall ladders. I can handle a short ladder, but not a tall one. And food poisoning. (laughs) I've had food poisoning five or six times. Uh, The first two times were in Central America, and it made me a germaphobe to some extent. But my worst case of food poisoning came, ironically, in London about three years ago. It was actually uh, life-threatening. So I really don't want to get food poisoning again. There's a fear factor involved there. So I know I'm getting older, but the older I get, it feels like at times I feel more vulnerable to fear, more so than I've ever been. And maybe that's part of aging. And COVID certainly has not helped. Actually, fear is not such a bad thing. Fear is an instinctual defense mechanism that can help us seek safety in the face of a threat. For instance, if a tornado is headed our way, especially since March of last year, it's okay to actually feel enough fear to trigger the reaction that you take cover and you uh, seek safety. So our fear instinct is actually a God-given defense mechanism against threat. The challenge... I think for all of us, is to not get paralyzed by fear or let fear diminish the way we live. Having said that, it's always been a bit of an odd comfort to me that the first disciples, the earliest little community of Jesus followers, were actually paralyzed by fear immediately after receiving news of the resurrection of Jesus. Our scripture today makes it clear that the first little gathering of Christian followers were gathered behind locked doors, huddled together in a room, barricading the door out of fear of the Jews after Jesus had been basically executed on the cross. News of an empty tomb did not eliminate their fear factor. I think that's really interesting in the story. That's oddly, it's always kind of been reassuring to me that maybe we are not that unlike them. So what happened to help them overcome their fear factor and their post-resurrection paralysis? What helped them? What made the difference? Here it is. Yes, we have an empty tomb that we celebrated last week, but it is the experience of the living presence and power of the resurrected Jesus. That's really the rest of the story and what makes a difference after Easter. 
It's what makes us Easter people. Our scripture today is one of several post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. The thing for us to comprehend is, as I said, the news of an empty tomb really didn't help the earliest Jesus followers to cope with the stresses, the strains, the fears of life just in in and of itself. Just an empty tomb really did not make a difference. There's more to the story. The continuing presence and power of Jesus as the resurrected and living Christ experienced in Christian community both then and now is the thing that makes our life better. It transforms our life. Look carefully at the post-resurrection story that we have today in the appearance of the resurrected Jesus. In that mysterious and miraculous moment, the living presence and power of the resurrected Jesus actually addresses nearly everything that we struggle with most. Think about what you struggle with in your life. Well, this first appearance of Jesus addresses nearly all of those circumstances and situations and experiences. So as we look at this story, we find that the name given at his birth, Emmanuel, meaning God with us, doesn't end with his earthly life, Jesus' earthly life at the tomb. No, as Jesus lives, then God with us continues. That's the best news of all. It extends to his resurrected life and his continuing presence with us. That's what makes a difference for us as Easter people. So look at the list of all the life challenges that the resurrected Jesus addresses. In this first appearance, in one appearance, Look at all of the things that he addresses, then and therefore now. Look at the much-needed help, the resurrected Jesus' appearance and experience of his believers, then and now, offers to us. Just look, there's, it's almost like a list of things we struggle with. So as Easter people... The living, abiding presence of the living Christ helps us. It makes a difference. So look at a list. Fear of the unknown. We all struggle with that. Especially after the death of a loved one. The disciples experience fear of the unknown. Jesus addresses that. The living Jesus. Fear of circumstances that have changed. We deal with that all the time. Life has changed. So fear of circumstances that have changed and not knowing what's next. So Jesus addresses that. The pronouncement of God's peace. Goodness gracious, how we need peace of mind, heart, soul, and life. We look for any glimpse of peace. And so when Jesus comes and stands in the presence of those disciples, that early Christian community that had barricaded them beside, behind closed doors out of fear, two times, what does he say? Peace be with you. That's actually a marker of the early Christian community. That's what, how Paul addresses the early church, grace and peace to you. So it goes back to the risen Christ. Twice. He addresses that ongoing need. Peace be with you. The biblical term in Hebrew is shalom. Well-being. In every way. Peace be with you. So Jesus says... My presence with you. 
will give to you the divine gift, at least in some measure, of peace, what we need so badly. Then Jesus offers this paralyzed little band of followers new purpose and next steps. He says, as the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you into the world. Purpose and next steps. We are a sent people to share the good news of being an Easter people. And then the last thing is empowerment. These early followers had had the breath knocked out of them. Sometimes we get the breath knocked out of us. So Jesus breathes the breath of life into them. The breath of the Holy Spirit. And becomes the continuing presence of God. The continuing presence of the Spirit of God. Not only among us, but within us. So he breathes life back into the early Christian believers. And then he endows them with power. And it is the power of forgiveness. He says, if you extend forgiveness, forgiveness is granted. If you withhold forgiveness, then forgiveness is withheld. So your mission is to share reconciliation with God and others. The gift of beginning again. A new lease on life. What a life-changing power He has entrusted to us. In the name of Jesus, as we have been forgiven, He says, so we may forgive others. We may pronounce forgiveness in His name. So the resurrected Jesus doesn't just offer us relief from the paralysis of fear that we find in so many of the circumstances of our life, the fear factors of our life. He offers us so much more. Peace of mind, heart, and spirit only God can give. A new lease on life and the hope of eternal life, the assurance of that, as well as the way to begin again in relationships, pronouncing forgiveness. He entrusted that power to us. So God with us, Jesus, the continuing presence of the resurrected Christ, moves us from paralysis by fear to thriving, to thriving. So my message today is think of how you would like to thrive in your life. Think of how you would like to thrive in ways that you have not been able to thrive before. Maybe because of fear. Maybe because of changing circumstances or fear of the unknown, uncertainty. Maybe you've not been able to thrive because of a lack of clarity or purpose in your life. Maybe you've not been able to thrive because you've had the breath knocked out of you. Maybe you're not thriving right now because you're still in bondage to some present sin or some past sin, some past failing, regret, remorse, or guilt. And it's holding you down or holding you back. Not allowing you to thrive as God intends. Well, Jesus, the living Jesus, not only helps us begin again and thrive, but he is with us and within us, as he promised, abiding always. What good news. What a transformative gift that makes us Easter people. So, That's the difference the resurrected Jesus makes in our life. Our founding father, John Wesley, described Christian salvation with two words, pardon and power. That's what we see being entrusted to the early Christian community, pardon and power. Pardon for forgiveness of sins, 
that we get to extend to others to begin again and power to thrive. God doesn't want us to language being bound by sin, death, or fear. God wants us to thrive. So the continuing presence of Christ makes us an Easter people. And by the presence and power of the living Christ, we're enabled to thrive as God intends. So here's an exercise for us today. For all of us on this Sunday after Easter, make a list of your fears. Make a list of all of your fear factors in your life that threaten to paralyze you at times and that withhold from you a life of thriving as God intended. And then give that to the one, to the resurrected one, the living Christ who says, peace be with you. And then catch your second wind. Give it, give all that holds you back or holds you down, give that to the Lamb of God who comes to forgive and to help us thrive and be reconciled to God and one another, beginning again. So give your list to the living Christ and all the ways that He is present with us and empowers us, will make us Easter people. God is with us. His power and His presence in Christ is not only among us, but within us. So fear not. Breathe deeply. Live more freely. And thrive with the living Christ. It starts by letting him overcome your fear factor. So make your list of fears and give it to the living Christ who meets us where we live every day and be an Easter people. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Beloved, grace and peace to you. Go forth today and every day to live as an Easter people, knowing and experiencing and sharing the pardon and power of the living Christ. Go in peace. Amen.